1935 when I arrived out there at a place called Mines Field. It was short by an 800 foot tarmac runway and a little flying school, small building run by Bob Blair and Cecil Smallwood. And the consolidated fleet was the airplane, the small biplane. But I learned and got my private pilot's license, then went on as I spent more time in Hollywood and ended up with my commercial license and over 400 hours. When the war came, I was drafted about eight months before Pearl Harbor. And I served as an enlisted man up in Northern California until Pearl Harbor. And then because of my 400 hours of flying, I was given a commission because there was, uh, there was a desperate need for instructors. So I was given a commission and put in Mather Air Base right up near Sacramento in California and started instructing students in advanced training, which was an AT-6 airplane, which was the first airplane I'd had with retracting landing gear, and uh, was, was there for a couple of months. I flew bombardiers in Albuquerque, New Mexico, when the Norton bomb site was being introduced. I did that for several months. I was sent to four engine school in Hobbs, New Mexico, uh, and uh, learned B-17. I instructed in B-17 in Boise, Idaho, and Sioux City. Uh, Sioux City, I was finally uh, given command of a squadron in B-17s and uh, went over to the 8th Air Force, which was just being formed and which is, was in operation at that time. We took the uh, southern crew because it was at winter time and went uh, down to South America to Natal, across uh, and uh, up through Marrakesh uh, to England. I'm afraid I'm a little out of practice at this appearing before the camera. About three years ago, the first day I got into the Army, I was asked to make a statement for the newsreels. And as I remember, I said, uh, I'm very proud to be here, and I'm going to do my best to be useful as a soldier of the United States Army. Well, the statement still goes, except that now I have my own outfit. It's a heavy bombardment squadron, so we are very proud to be here, and we're going to do our best to be useful as soldiers of the United States Army. Thank you. Right. I'm afraid I'm a little out of. Uh, I'm afraid I'm a little out of words. I'm afraid I'm a little out of practice at this appearing before the camera. About three years ago, the first day I got into the Army, I was asked to make a statement for the newsreels. And as I remembered, I said, I'm very proud to be here, and I'm going to do my best to be useful as a soldier in the United States Army. Well, that statement still goes, except that now I have my own outfit, a heavy bombardment group, I'm afraid I'm a little out of practice in this appearing before the camera. I remember about three years ago, the first day I was in the Army, I was asked to make a statement for the newsreels. And as I remember, I said, uh, I'm very proud to be here. And I'm going to do my best to be useful as a soldier in the United States Army. Well, that same statement still goes. Except now I have my own outfit, 
I have a bomber squadron. So it's we are very proud to be here and we're going to do our best to be useful as soldiers in the United States Army. Hollywood film star James Stewart is now a captain in the Air Force. Interviewed in Britain, he had this to say about his wartime job. I'm afraid I'm a little out of practice at this appearing before the camera. About three years ago, the first day I got into the Army, I was asked to make a statement for the newsreels. And as I remember it, I said, I'm very proud to be here, and I'm going to do my best to be useful as a soldier in the United States Army. Well, that statement still goes, except that now I have my own outfit, the Heavy Bombardment Group. So we are very proud to be here, and we're going to do our best to be useful as soldiers of the United States Army. Thank you. In England, I remained in command of the squadron, and I went from, during during my combat experience, went from uh, uh, there to operations officer of the next, uh, 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 another group, and uh, finished, out, finished out the war uh, in wing headquarters. Every, on the, when the war ended, everybody took the airplanes, and I wasn't fast enough and was left with no airplane. <laughs> so about, I was in charge of about eight men. Uh, at the headquarters, and we were told to get down to uh, southern England. We ended up on the Queen Elizabeth, who had, that had been carrying troops all over the world during the war. There were 28,000 of us on the Queen Elizabeth. The, the Rainbow Division was there, bless their hearts. 